Hey guys, so welcome back to Miller Med Talks. I'm so sorry it's been a while. The festive season got the better of me. Um, so I got really excited because I got a whiteboard and I thought I could use that to do um, some educational videos for you guys. However, the lighting isn't great, so I need to work on that. So I'm just going to go for the old school method and use the old paper. So I'm going to draw it out and then I'll show you guys and then we'll go through it. So today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite medications to counsel on. A favorite in terms of not, um, well for the patient it's not really because the drug class is an SSRI. So that stands for a Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. So I'm going to focus on one of these drugs in that class. So that's escitalopram. So escitalopram is actually an, um, it's an n antimer of citalopram. So you've got citalopram and you've got escitalopram. So uh, citalopram is a race mate mixture. So it's got two n antimers. So it's got your R form and your S form whereas escitalopram only has the S form. So that's the one that we're gonna focus on today. So what is it indicated for? So escitalopram is um, one of the first lines pharmacologically for depression or general anxiety, yeah? So if anyone's feeling down um, from time to time, it's normal to feel down as part of life, situations occur. However, when this has persisted and the patient can't seem to find happiness in their day-to-day -day routine, um, if they can't sleep, if all these things are going on and they can't help it despite trying to do lifestyle changes, that's when the doctor might introduce this drug for them. So what basically happens is you have a, I'm gonna draw it out and then show you, so you have a presynaptic presynaptic nerve terminal presynaptic nerve terminal and then on the other side you have a post synaptic nerve terminal So as I said before it's an SSRI so uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Okay, so you've got your presynaptic nerve terminal, your postsynaptic nerve terminal. What happens is you've got your axons running in here and then they are triggered to release these things, the chemicals called serotonin. Yep, you've got this little receptor here which helps release the serotonin into the synaptic cleft. So this is called the synaptic cleft in here. And this is generally in the CNS of the central nervous system. Um, so this releases your serotonin. And then in your postsynaptic terminal, um, you've got the receptors here that take in the serotonin to exert its activity and basically help to stabilize that mood. You've also got, I'll change the color, another receptor. Um, I'm just gonna make it red which can reuptake the serotonin from the cleft back into the presynaptic nerve terminal. Yes, so that's what happens in a normal functioning person, basically. So you've got excretion of serotonin, it comes out of the receptors, you've got a lot of serotonin in the cleft, um, some will go down into the postsynaptic nerve terminal, and some will come back up through the reuptake uh, receptors and come back in here. Now how an SSRI works, oh, its name sort of says it, so uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So these red bits here were your serotonin reuptake uh, receptors, yep. So escitalopram is going to come and bind here and block it. So by blocking that, we cannot uptake the serotonin back into the presynaptic nerve. So in that case, we get an increase of serotonin in the cleft, yes? So by increasing the serotonin, it's then going to help regulate someone's mood and make them happy, essentially, or reduce anxiety, feelings of worthlessness, um, negative thoughts, incoherent uh, sleep patterns. So increasing that 
neurotransmitter serotonin can have a lot of beneficial effects for someone that has used lifestyle um, changes that have been ineffective for their anxiety or depression. So that's how it works. Now, the normal dose of escitalopram is generally, so the tablets come in a 10 milligram and a 20 milligram. A lot of doctors initially will start their patients on maybe half of a 10 milligram for three days and then so go half a tablet and then go to one and then review in about four to six weeks or sooner in some instances if the patient is possessing signs of um, like suicidal ideologies or thoughts or anything like that, um, the doctor will want to review them sooner. But they'll go to the 10 milligram, which is the therapeutic dosage. If it's working, but not 100%, they might then put them onto the 20 milligrams. In some instances, um, it's not unusual to see 40, However, the therapeutic range is generally 10 to 20 milligrams. Now, with this medication, even though it binds to the uh, reuptake receptor immediately, it doesn't actually have immediate effects. So this medication can actually take four to six, four to six weeks, not 46. So four to six weeks to start exerting a positive effect. So with any patients in the pharmacy, that have got their script filled, I've counselled them on the medication, um, then they come back in to get their second prescription filled. Sometimes um, when I say, how's it all going? They'll say, look, yeah, I'm still feeling a bit down. Um, the anxiety is still spiking. Now that's not uncommon. And then I reassure them that this medication actually, because it is working in your central nervous system, it is changing the biochemistry and the um, neurotransmitters, so it does take some time. So give it, give it another couple of weeks. If it's still then ineffective, then go and talk to your doctor about potentially um, changing the dosage or potentially changing the medication because there's a lot of different drug classes that can help with um, anxiety and depression. Now, I don't go into full detail with the patient on how it works in terms of presynaptic and postsynaptic and synaptic cleft. So when I counsel the patient, I try and put it into terms that they will understand without creating more anxiety through using jargon and medical terms that's going to confuse them even more. Usually if your patient is presenting with anxiety and depression, they're already um, having difficulty concentrating, uh, listening, taking things in. So I try and keep it you know, simple for them and just give them the few um, main key points. So if I'm to counsel someone on this medication, I'll first of all ask them, do you know why you've been prescribed this medication? Has your um, doctor gone through it with you? And this just allows me to gauge how much of an understanding they already have on the medication. There's no point me going through it with them in detail if they already know. Yeah, sometimes it's good for a refresher, but every patient is different. So I'll basically say, okay, yes, yeah, so this is basically gonna help um, increase your mood. It can take four to six weeks to have a full effect. I'll go through the dosage as per what the doctor has prescribed. Um, I'll generally say take it with food. Escitalopram, morning or night, doesn't really matter. 70% of patients will take it in the morning because they might find they get some insomnia. So it's quite individualized. So just see how you go is what I will generally tell the patient. So I've gone through um, how to take it morning or night. It's individualized. I'll then also go through just to brief how it works. So it's basically going to increase your happy chemicals um, to help increase that mood. I'll reassure them it's not going to happen immediately. It can take four to six weeks. I'll go through a few key um, side effects they need to be wary of. So sleep disturbances as I went through so they can individualize that. Um, it can cause some nausea. So you can take it with some food to reduce the stomach upset. Um, it can cause a bit of dizziness. And initially for the first couple of weeks, it can make you feel a little bit spacey and affect your concentration and mental alertness. So that's completely normal. However, if it's affecting the patient to a point um, that's very drastic, then they need to see the doctor. They might be having a reaction to the medication. Um, so yeah, I guess that's just a little brief on an SSRI, escitalopram. And I hope you guys found that okay to understand. Okay, bye.